Hello, this is Rick from MathX, and today we're going to be doing the number 25 from the AMC 10A of 2021. Now, the number 25 from this year's test is astoundingly easy. On a typical AMC 10 test, the number 25 should be the crux of the test. It should be the problem where even if you get all the other problems right, you're going to have a difficult time trying to figure out how to solve the number 25. However, in the case of the number 25 from the AMC 10A of 2021, I would honestly say that there were problems between 15 to 22 that would be harder than number 25. And I'm about to show you why. Even though this problem looks a little bit tricky and is in the final spot of AMC 10, as I'm about to show you, you can solve it using nothing but simple counting principles and casework. So without further ado, let's just get into the problem. How many ways are there to place three indistinguishable red chips, three indistinguishable blue chips, and three indistinguishable green chips in the squares of a 3x3 three three grid such that no two chips of the same color are directly to adjacent to each other, either vertically or horizontally? So the setup for this problem is pretty simple. We have three chips that are red, three chips that are blue, and three chips that are green. And since it says indistinguishable, these chips all look the same. So we can't actually tell the difference between two different red chips or two different blue chips or two different green chips. And it wants to know the number of ways we can arrange them in a three by three grid, such that no two chips of the same color are next to each other, either vertically or horizontally. So, we should start by drawing out a bunch of grids and seeing what happens when we place these chips in those grids. So here I've drawn out a couple of grids. So let's just, I don't know, play around with the chips and by placing them in each of the squares in the grid and see what happens. This will hopefully give us an idea about what cases we need to count for. So, Let's just look with this first grid on the far left. Let's just say I pick a red chip and I want to put it in the middle. I have two other red chips that I need to place. So how could I place them on this grid? Since I know that these other two red chips cannot be directly horizontal or vertical to the middle red chip, that must mean that they are on one of the squares that is on the diagonal to the middle square. So, we can place these other two red chips on the squares to the diagonals to the middle one. So, we can place this first one here. And then, we can place the other one in three other places. However, even though they're three other places, it's technically only two configurations. One where the red chips are on the diagonal, and the other case is where the red chips are not all on the diagonal. So let's just look at this first case where the red chips are not all on the diagonal. So now we used up all our red chips, but we still have two other chip colors to use, blue and green. So Right now, there are no restrictions, so I can place my first blue chip wherever I want. Let's just say I put him there. If I place my first blue chip there, then I need to place down two other blue chips. So there are five possible squares I could put it in, but let's just put it in such a way that when we place down the green chips, they satisfy the criteria provided. If we put down the blue chips in this squares, we'll see that then the green chips will have to be adjacent to each other. So we should avoid putting the blue chips in either this square or this square. This leaves three squares left. Similarly, if we put one of the blue chips in this square, by a uh, pigeonhole principle, this means that at least two of the green chips will have to be next to each other. So pretty much, in order for this grid to match the criteria provided in the problem, we need to put the other two blue chips in this square 
and this square. And doing that, we can see that the green squares, the green chips will go in squares such that the criteria originally provided in the problem match up. So we have one grid that works out. So, but here's the thing. Even though we placed down red, blue, and green, we didn't do anything specific just to that color. So we can rearrange the colors in this grid in any way we want. So we can rearrange the colors red, blue, and green in three factorial ways. So there are six ways to just rearrange the colors right there. Along with that, since the problem never said that it wants direct configurations and not rotations, we also have to take account rotations for this configuration. So we can take configurations where the middle square and the two side squares are on the left, right, and down, along with the one on top. So we can multiply this case by the four different rotations. So based on this first configuration, we got 24 cases. Now, this may be appealing as an answer choice in the problem. However, we should see what other cases work because it might increase our answer so far to a larger number, like 30 or 36. So let's try to look at another configuration. Let's start with red in the middle once again and the other red along the diagonal. But let's see what happens if we put that other red on that same diagonal. Now we have to place down the two other chip colors on the remaining six squares. So we already did the case where we put the blue in a square adjacent to one of the corner reds. So let's just try placing the blue on a diagonal square to the center red, like this. Now that we've placed the blue on this square, we see that the remaining two blue tiles can go in a total of three different spots because they can't go in the two squares directly adjacent to our first blue tile. So these, if we look at these three running spots, and let's just say we consider putting the blue in this spot, then we see that we're kind of forcing the third blue tile to be adjacent to one of the either two blue tiles. Because if we put the second blue tile in this spot, there are only four remaining spots. And each of these four remaining spots is adjacent to at least one blue tile. So if we put a blue tile in this corner spot, we're going to force the final blue tile to be next to another blue tile, which won't work. Which means that in reality, even though there are three spots remaining for the second blue tile, if we put the second blue tile in the other corner spot, then we're not going to be able to create a grid that satisfies the conditions of the problem. Meaning that we must put the other blue tile in one of the remaining two spots that are not the other, that is not the other corner square. So there. And then since we put this blue tile there, we have to put the other blue tile in the only remaining spot left, this spot. So now we've placed down all the blue tiles. As we can see, since we've placed down all the blue tiles and we've placed down all the red tiles, we only need to put down the three remaining green tiles. And if you look at the squares, that are empty for these green tiles, they match the criteria of the problem. So we can just place them down without thinking any further. So here we found another grid that works out. Just like with our first grid, we can rearrange the red, blue, greens however you want. So these three letters can be rearranged in three factorial ways or six.
However, we can't do the same rotations that we took account for in the first case. Since, in this case, there aren't really four rotations. In this case, the main defining trait about this grid is this diagonal. So, there are only two ways to configure this diagonal. Going from the upper left to the lower right, or starting from the upper right and going to the lower left. So that gives us two ways to rearrange for reflections and rotations. So with this grid, we find another six times two possible grids, which is just 12. So now we have another 12 options, giving us 36 total options. Now, theoretically, we could find for more ways that work and try to eliminate any other possible cases with this grid. However, as you can see, we already got 36, and this is the maximum number of ways in the choices provided. So if you're a diligent mathlete and want to do this in your own spare time, you can bash out any other cases to see if you miss any cases or if there are any cases that we haven't taken account for so far. But if you're doing this on the test, you should realize that 36 is the answer we got. And this is the maximum possible answer provided in the problem. So this must be the answer to that problem. And seeing this, you'd probably circle C. So this problem was pretty easy for a number 25. We didn't use any advanced thinking or counting principles or anything. We just experimented and tried out some casework. And doing this, we found out the total number of ways to rearrange these tiles in this grid. So I guess the moral behind this problem is that don't always judge a problem by its ranking on the test. Because as I showed you, this number 25 was probably easier than some of the middle tier problems from the AMC 10 test. Because all you need to do was experiment, do a bit of casework, and then just apply simple counting principles. And just like that, you've just solved a number 25 from an AMC 10 test.